Jays on Sportsnet. Presented by Honda. The Honda Checkered Flag event is back. Get there fast. Leave even faster. Welcome to Rogers Center Saturday afternoon on this third game of a four game series. The Channel Mariners had been swinging the hot bats. Except they got in here. They were shut out for the third time last time. Blue Jays won that game for nothing. Marcus Stroman goes to the mound to make his first career appearance against the Seattle Mariners. 17 and 19, that's the Mariners' record. They're third in the American League West. Gene Segura has an 11 game hit streak, and he's done a great job leading off ball games. He's 10 for 21, batting for the first time. In a game, and he's a good leadoff hitter. And in the third spot, Nelson Cruz loves hitting against the Blue Jays. He homered here on the opener Thursday night, a first inning home run, and got the Mariners off and running. But they haven't scored since. So the Mariners have really missed the presence of Robinson Cano in their lineup, and Marcus Stroman is happy about that. And the bullpen has been great, too, throwing up all those zeros. Eighth start of the season for Marcus Stroman, pitched six scoreless innings. Holding the innings to six hits, two walks on Monday, winning that third game of the season. Two things happened in that game. Marcus only had one strikeout. That's the fewest strikeouts he has recorded in any of the 58 games he has pitched at least four innings. And he also had that sinker work in three more double plays for Marcus Stroman. That gives him 11 this season. When he's on, he's got the ball down. He's going to get a lot of ground ball outs. The Mariners, the only American League team that Stroman has never faced so a little unfamiliarity on both of them. Well it is Mother's Day weekend and those are Marcus Stroman's cleats. I love you mama as we have expanded the pink uniforms to the Saturday and Sunday games. Let's take a look at the defense for the Blue Jays. Carrera is in left field and Bautista's back in right. Of course the anchors in center that's Kevin Pillar. Darwin Barney starts at third Goins and Coglin up the middle. Smoke has played great at first base. And Luke Bailey continues to catch. He will do the catching today for Marcus Stroman. This one change in the field. Chris Cogman will get his second start at second base. David, Devin Travis is going to get the afternoon off after playing last night. So Chris Cogman, who's a little bit better at second base than he is at third base, will get the start with Marcus Stroman on the mound. Stroman, of course, gets a lot of ground balls when he pitches. So the infield defense becomes very important. Gene Segura, we mentioned his 11 game hit streak. He's also three for four in his career against Marcus Stroman. Here's the first pitch of the ball game. It is in there for a strike, and we are underway. Angel Hernandez, the umpire behind the plate this afternoon. Segura batting 364 for the season. Goes after that pitch. He's a free swinger. Well, and it doesn't matter if Marcus Stroman is quick pitching him like he just did. He's got that very deliberate wind up this year. And sometimes he will step over towards first base to start his wind up. That time he just quick bit Segura and he was still ready. A little hesitation from Stroman. Breaking ball. Cut on and missed. Segura is down on strikes. Well, his last start he started throwing more breaking balls and I think you have to do that when you're playing the Indians last start more curve balls 11.7 percent as opposed to 7 percent more slider usage he can still use that good four seam fastball and he's got a very good sinker going. Ben Gamble the right fielder and that's another strike from Stroman. Three twenty eight in fifteen games so far for the right fielder. Ground ball. That's going to be a base hit. That's interesting. Stroman that wasn't that sharply hit but he hit it in a perfect spot this season. Stroman has given up a two sixty eight average on ground balls. That's about thirty six points higher than what he gave up last year. No Josh Donaldson Ryan Goins was playing more second base last year Troy Tulowitzki was at shortstop. This one will find a hole that's 23 ground ball hits now this year that he has given up just one off the lead as that one just down to the reach of Darwin Barney. Yeah I think the fact that 
Goins was at second, Donaldson at third, and then Tulowitzki at short most of the time early in the season. Helped Strowman out a lot. Nelson Cruz. Breaking ball off the end of the bat. Cruz has 22 career home runs against the Blue Jays, 78 RBIs in just 77 games. He's having a good season as well, batting 320. Really bunch him in the outfield. He can hit the ball anywhere in this ballpark with some power. There's the outfield, bunching him into the gaps. They don't think he's going to get out in front of Marcus Stroman and pull about ball down the left field line nor do they think he's going to be late and hit it down the right field line. So that's why you see the outfielders bunching him in the middle to take away those extra bases. Now the ground ball finds a hole on the right side. Gamma will stop at second as Cruz gets a two out base hit a couple of Soft a two strike base hit a couple of soft ground balls found their way to the right spot on the infield. Well, look, if you're Marcus Stroman, there's nothing you can do. You can make a good pitch. If they happen to find a hole, there's nothing you can do about this. This could easily be right at the second baseman. Four six three double play. Continue to make your pitches. Don't worry about those two seeing eye hits here in the first inning. Continue to make some pitches. Kyle Seeger going up against Stroman for the first time. He takes a first pitch strike. Seeger one for four in last night's game. He's two for eight in the series. This team was shut out for nothing last night. Just the third time this season they've been shut out. Seeger is such a good run producer. Set career highs in home runs last year with 30 at 99 RBIs last season. He had a very high slugging percentage of almost 500 and on base percentage of almost 360. He's a good run producer. They have him hitting fourth this afternoon. Stroman has a knack for inducing double plays. He has been on the mound and the Blue Jays have turned 11 ground ball double plays. That is a second. In the American League to Dallas Keuchel. The breaking ball and Seager swings over the top of it. He was talking the other day as you see the numbers that you were just talking about. Double plays induced Dallas Keuchel 12. And there's Marcus with 11 second in the American League. He was talking the other day that he he found that sinker where he gets a lot of those ground ball outs by accident just playing with the grip and just working with it just holding the baseball and just finding something that works for him. Remember he was forcing fastball slider or curveball but he'll get his share of ground ball outs with that good hard sinker that one's off the breaking ball and just let the middle of the diamond do everything else. Goins Travis. And then another big double play and the prettiest one was this one back to the mound. He shows his athleticism with the throw by Goins. Marcus Stroman got three of those against the Indians. Stroman himself has started three double plays from the mound. That's the most in the majors. So double play in order here. Ball and two strikes on Kyle Seeger. Gamble at second with an infield single. Cruz had a ground ball base hit to right. He's at first. Seattle was 0 for 7 in last night's game with runners in scoring position. Robinson Cano continues to sit on the sidelines in this series. He played Wednesday in Philadelphia and had four hits, but he missed Tuesday's game in Philly with a bad leg and then got back in the lineup and he's just not ready to go yet. Reaggravated re re that on a ground ball. Good pitch. Strike three call. Inside corner. Seeger caught looking at strike three. When you sense that a hitter is on your breaking ball, either your sinker or your slider or your changeup, 
that's when you change and you try and fire that four seamer and that's exactly what it was four seam fastball right on the inner half and he freezes a really good hitter. Danny Valencia former Blue Jay is stepping in the box. I got the idea that Maley the catcher and Stroman the pitcher felt that Seeger was sitting on a breaking ball. He was fouling off some pretty good pitches so they went to that four seamer picked up a really big strikeout. Danny Valencia has been swinging the bat well over his last 14 games hitting 365. Stroman used that hesitation very effectively there looked like it caught Valencia off guard a bit. He did an interesting thing. He hesitated but he kept his eye on the runner at second base like he was thinking about it. There's the strike the ball ratio. Not bad. That's a wicked breaking ball. This continues to break away from Valencia. Boy, if he could have that breaking ball today against the right handers in a sinker against the lefties, it could be tough. One and two, Strowman trying to get out of an early jam. Bounce that one in the dirt. Luke Maley has been a very refreshing addition to this ball club. He's done a nice job catching. He's gotten up to speed quickly with all the pitchers. He's made some good blocks. This is his eighth start. You talk to some of the pitchers and they like throwing to him. They like the way he calls games. They like the way he blocks balls. They like how he receives the ball. Marcus Stroman strikes out the side. He gives up a couple of ground ball base hits. The Mariners strand a pair. Stroman off to a good start. The slider is really locked in early here this afternoon. Two ground ball base hits. He struck out the side in the top half of the first. Now it's over to the hitters. Blue Jays have won three in a row. Hitters starting to come around. Let's take a look at the lineup for John Gibbons Blue Jays. They're six games under 500. Inching closer to that plateau. In the two spot, Ezekiel Carrera on his home stands had a nice run, eight for 18. A couple of extra base hits and two RBIs. And then good to see this man, Matt Kendris Morales, back into the lineup. And before he was injured, his last nine games, he'd been swinging the bat well. Four doubles, two home runs, and six RBIs. So it's good to have him back in the fourth spot. They will face 26-year-old Ryan Weber, a former 22nd-round draft pick in 2009 by Atlanta, has been pitching all season at AAA Tacoma, where he's 2-0 with an 085 earned run average in six games, including five starts. He has some major league experience: 21 games and seven starts with Atlanta in 2015 and 2016. Kevin Pillar, the leadoff man, batting 303.
Weber is not overpowering. He relies a lot on a sinking fastball. This is his eighth major league start. He's 0 and 4, and he's allowed five, had a lot of home runs in five of his seven previous starts. Ground ball, nice play by Segura. Pops up and throws Pilar out. Segura taking a hit away from Kevin Pilar. Jeff Mariners have committed 19 errors this season. It's Heredia Dyson and Gamble in the outfield from left to right. Kyle Seeger's at third. Up the middle, it's Segura and Motter making his second start at second base. Danny Valencia at first. Tuffy go switch back behind the plate. Doing the catching for Ryan Weber. And at third base, that's a good one. Kyle Seeger, since 2012, he leads all players and starts at third base. This is his 800th start at third base since 2012. He was tied last year with Adrian Beltre for the most defensive runs saved as a third baseman with 15. CQ Carrera takes a breaking ball for a strike quickly 0 and 2. Blue Jays did a great job hitting with two strikes yesterday in last night's game they had five two strike hits. This ball is driven to the alley and left center Dyson can really go get him. Gerard Dyson with terrific speed in center tracks that one down. Well he has never faced the Blue Jays he, the Mariners claimed off waivers in November so let's take a little closer look at this afternoon's Ryan Weber this is his 2016 pitch usage because this is his first start first appearance in the big leagues this year his fastball he throws at 50 percent of the time and they've hit it hard 338 and this is in a curveball in a slider at a 385 average and a changeup so the four pitches that you normally have from a starter he's got them all he's going to have to hit his spots because he doesn't light up the radar gun he's going to have to hit his spots change speeds and really Pitch backwards against the Blue Jays. They've never faced him before. Jose Bautista did a two run home run in yesterday's game. That came in the third inning against Christian Bergman to start it. His fourth of the season, his 10th career home run against the Mariners. Well, is that one foul? Now Bautista has hit 10 or more home runs against 11 different ball clubs. There are his numbers in 50 games against Seattle. Remember his famous home run against Seattle? His 50th in that game against King Felix. Fly ball to left field. Already it took a bad route. That ball's going to bounce up against the wall. Bautista is headed for second. A two out double. Or oh, he got to that breaking ball and just one handed it all the way to the alley in left center. Well, I think the Blue Jays are going to find out as they go through the lineup that Ryan Weber is not overpowering, doesn't throw the ball very hard, so you're going to have to wait back just a little bit more. This is a breaking ball. He spins up there, and Bautista stays back just long enough to get to it and then throw his hands at the baseball. Already has got a lot of speed in the outfield, but he's not going to catch that one. Even if he takes a good route, he's not going to catch that one. It was just hit too hard. Kendris Morales back in the lineup. He gets a breaking ball in there for a strike. Morales missed three games. He last played on Tuesday. Coaches will ask him if he's okay. The training staff and everyone to ask him if he's okay. How's he feel? He's out here running the bases. He was running some sprints, but they will still remind him before this afternoon's game. Take it easy. You know, there's no sense really pushing it if you're not 100% with that hamstring. Just take it easy. You don't have to sprint everywhere. His bat in the lineup I think means more to the Blue Jays than him trying to leg a single into a double. Yeah you just want him up there hitting the ball and driving the ball driving in runs. He's got 20 RBIs. He's second on the team to Justin Spoke in that department. One and two two outs. Bautista at second.
And Morales for the last couple of days has been out running the bases almost like he was having a tryout <laughs> to satisfy the coaches. The coaches came out and watched him run the bases early this morning. It's like we used to do at spring training. You run right through the bag at first base, then you act like there's a single, then you act like there's a double. And off that breaking ball. The important thing about running the bases is how you start and how you stop when you've got a hamstring problem. Once you get going, you can pretty much feel pretty good. But once you start to slow down into a base, that's when you really start to have that hamstring grab you. So you got to make sure you're okay. Baseball is all about quick moves, whether you're starting or stopping. Two and two. Covers that outside pitch. Bautista hit the two out double. It's his fifth extra base hit in his last 12 games. Another sign that things are starting to turn for Jose. He only had four extra base hits in his first 25 games. Yesterday with a home run, today in his first at bat, a double. Little chopper out in front of home. Weber throws to first, and that'll do it. The Blue Jays strand a base runner. We played an inning here at Rogers Center. No score. Shuffling of the lineups for the Blue Jays. There have been some defensive hiccups too. The latest came the last couple of nights with Kevin Pillar and Ezekiel Carrera out on the outfield. On Thursday, they nearly collided in right center. And yesterday evening, more of the same. Now, it was Pillar who told me, look, I have to trust Zeke a little bit more. I'm used to playing with Jose, who gives me free range. But Pillar said, on my end, I have to do a better job of understanding where Carrera's at. I have to peek over and see uh, Kevin added it's more on me than it is on him. Now we know Pilar is an aggressive center fielder who can make the incredible grab look routine and Pilar added I just have to trust Zeke is going to get there too. Yeah Kevin Pilar is definitely the quarterback of the outfield and he has a priority no matter who's playing out there but they have had their issues lately. Good of him to step up. Marcus Stroman pounding that strike zone early. 0 and 2 to Taylor Mater. Pounding it with quality pitches too. Down. Everything's got to be down. Sinkers, sliders down. Every now and then you can pump that four seamer up. Breaking ball. They left out over the plate, and Mater gets a hit. His third hit in this series. Breaking ball that stayed over the middle of the plate with two strikes. You'd like to bury it as it backs up for Taylor Motter. The super slow mo brought to you by the Samsung QLED. The next innovation 
in TV. That is the third hit already that the Mariners have picked up this afternoon. Three hits, three strikeouts for Stroman. This is the left fielder, Guillermo Heredia. Heredia is a free swinger. He's off to a good start, hitting 310 in 23 games. I don't think you have to throw him too many good pitches. I think he wants to swing. Get it close. <laughs> Just get it close. Get it on the ground. Potter can run a little bit. He's two for two in stolen bases. Jay's going through the signs with the catcher, the throw over signs, the hold signs. I think something might be up here. Not running. A snap throw behind the runner, and Motter is back. It was a called strike, so now it's one and one on Heredia. Luke Maley has shown he's not afraid to throw the ball around the diamond. You do that just to keep that guy a, a step closer to the base, or his secondary lead is not as big. Modder's running. Breaking ball is fouled off the catcher. Maley, boy, he got hit flush. He was getting ready to come out of the crouch, make a throw. The ball was fouled off, and he's going to get a visit from Mike Frosted, the trainer. John Gibbons is a catcher in his playing days. He can relate. That's a good sign. Yeah. That the two guys are smiling. Not so good for Luke, but it's okay for the other two guys. <laughs> Foul tip. And yeah, the runner's got to go back to first. All right, Bailey regrouping, ready to go, looking into DeMarlo Hale for a possible sign. It's one and two, nobody out. Got him. Another breaking ball and a good one. Four strikeouts now for Stroman. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Thank you very much Jamie Tampa Bay 18 and 20 and one last night for sale he's been a tough customer sale is tough on everybody but in particular tough on left handed hitters that's just the third home run he's allowed this season. There goes the runner he got a good jump and Maley dropped the ball trying to get that quick transfer never came out of his glove with it. Taylor Motter two for two in stolen bases this year. You could tell he was antsy over there at first base getting a big lead and then leaning on that front foot. He was just waiting for Stroman to make a move. You see him leaning on that right foot leaning leaning and now he goes once Marcus goes home and really no chance for the Blue Jays to throw him out. Tell you what he gives you good effort every day. Doesn't yeah, he? He's an interesting guy. Can do a lot of things. This is Gerard Dyson, the center fielder. Dyson has the most at bats of any Mariner in this lineup against Stroman. He's one for five. This is the first time Stroman has pitched against the Seattle Mariners. Do you know who uh, Taylor Motter reminds me of? Our man from Gladden, Dan Gladden. That's good call. Dan is now with Minnesota. He was a great player for the Twins. Played hard in the outfield. Looked a little bit like him. Didn't have that long hair, but looked like him. Played like him. Played hard every day. Dyson takes ball four. So a one-hour walk. Now that'll be runners at first and second for the catcher. That might not be a bad walk right there. Number nine hitter Tuffy Ghostwitch, the catcher, a right-handed hitter, 
A chance for another ground ball. Yeah. Maybe get him out of the inning. Be careful. I was thinking the same thing. And if you're Scott Service, he's probably thinking, I've got some speed on the bases right here. You better keep him close to the bases. This might be a good time for the double steal. One out. Stroman thinks that that's the case, and he almost got Motter. But that inside move, Stroman checked back on Motter, and he'd already taken one big giant jump toward third. And if they had a pickoff on, that wasn't a pickoff play. If they had it on, he would have been out. First pitch strike to go switch. Stroman's a terrific fielder. As we mentioned, he has started three double plays himself. That's the most by any pitcher in the majors. Boy, he's so athletic. And that ball comes back there. He wants to help himself defensively. Stroman will step off as Coughlin broke in behind the runner at second. Missed it's 0 and 2. Go switch was 0 for 4 Thursday night in the first game of this series. Carlos Ruiz caught last night. Scott Service in his second season as the manager of the Mariners. Got it. Foul tip. Mailey hangs on for the strikeout. That's five strikeouts. Some good movement. We've already talked about his slider being good today. That time he ran that thing right in under the hands. First pitch, a huge pitch in this at bat, in my estimation. Segura, very aggressive. Down and away for ball one. Came into this game. Number one in the American League finally got enough at bats to qualify. Number one in the American League in batting. He missed 12 games with a hamstring problem earlier this year. He's got the third highest batting average in the majors. Ryan Zimmerman leads the majors, and right behind him is his teammate, Bryce Harper. Zimmerman hitting 393, Harper hitting 372, and Segura currently hitting 361. Wow, big numbers. Wow. Segura 394 since he came back from the disabled list. And he gets all kind of hits. Hits the ball everywhere on the field. What well, a good pitch. That's that strike to ball, breaking ball. It starts on the outside corner. Mariners have a good hitting lineup and you see what their hitters have done in May. The big one not in the lineup in this series Robinson Cano hitting over 400 that's first in the American League this month right behind him his teammate the guy at the plate hitting over 400. One and two. Bailey trots out to the mound to talk about this next pitch. Gene Segura is hitting 326 over his last 162 games. He's put up 222 hits since last April 21st. That's the fifth most in the major leagues. Mookie Betts, Jose Altuve, Charlie Blackman, and Robinson Cano have more than Segura. But he missed significant time. 12 games he missed with that hamstring problem. One and two. Fouls it off. Boy, he stays on that pitch. Yeah. His head stays right out over that swing. He was a big prospect for the Los Angeles Angels when he came up, and he has actually dealt for Zach Greinke. Went to Milwaukee in the Zach Greinke trade. 
spent some big years with the Brewers and then one year last year with Arizona before being traded to the Mariners. All right, Haley, he took that shot right in the chest protector. Thinking about blocking the breaking ball, it might be in the dirt, and Segura got a piece of it and fouled it straight into the catcher's midsection. Been a rough inning. <laughs> this one looks like it got him in the bread basket. No, nope, off the leg and then the bread the basket. Leg. That is the one foul tip that I hated more than anything. The one that hits you in the inside of your thigh. Absolutely burns. Another one two pitch. Quite a battle here. Strowman and Segura. Changed his eye plane and ran that fastball that's upstairs. Right. That's right. That's the right pitch right there. You, you look at that cluster of pitches, everything is down, either down and away, down middle, down in. Everything's down. You got to stand him up with that fastball, which he did. It's now two and two. Fly ball to center. A couple of steps back. Now he comes in and Strowman. Again, leaves two more on base. The Mariners continue to struggle hitting with runners in scoring position. Uh, the next one is Saturday, May 27th, when the Blue Jays face the Texas Rangers. Here, a 107 start. There are special price kids tickets in the 200 level outfield and 500 levels. And after the game, as always, kids 14 and under can run the bases just like the pros. Junior Jays Saturdays, presented by Boston Pizza, BlueJays.com for tickets. Lots of kids here in attendance as it is Junior Jays Saturday, always a popular day, and this youngster is seventh birthday. And he's having his wishes granted. Jay's game with his dad. That's a check mark. Guess he already got the bike, and now he's already been on TV. Check it off. Somebody text him. Happy birthday. Dustin Smoke okay. takes a first pitch strike. Six homers, 21 driven in for Smoke. Quite a bit of movement on that fastball. That Pitch starts off the plate inside and catches the inner half. Throws a lot of strikes. He only had four walks in 31 and two-thirds innings in AAA this year. High fly ball to center field. Dyson on the run, long run, and he's there once again. Boy, he covers a lot of ground. One away. Buy six cans of Beauty Tone paint and get the seventh free. Available exclusively at home hardware and building center locations. Beauty Tone, Canada's color experts. Roof is closed at Rogers Center. There's big banners with the 
image of the several of Blue Jays players hanging all around the stadium on the outside. Brian Goins. Goins batting 225. Weber staying out of the middle so far. Goins wants a little bit of extra stick him on that brand new bat. Blue Jays wearing pink uniforms. Pink shoes and using the pink bats in honor of Mother's Day. Major League Baseball initiative to raise awareness for breast cancer. Brand new bats, there's no stick em on them. You kind of put some pine tar or that stick em so you get a good grip. It's been working for Ryan Gones. Nine RBIs in the month of May with a couple of home runs. Slow breaking ball in there, and that evens the count at two and two. That's what I mean about pitching backwards. That was a fastball count two and one, and he dropped that slow breaking ball in on Ryan. Liner into center, but that's going to stay up for Dyson. Goins is retired two away. Weber's 26 years old. He played high school at Clearwater Catholic High School. Went to St. Pete College, Junior College, and there have been some players that have come out of St. Pete College, a couple of Blue Jays, Todd Redmond and Brian LaHare. Tim Tuffle also played at St. Pete College, as did Cody Allen. So it's got a pretty good baseball program down there. Brian was drafted by the Atlanta Braves. And you know this guy. He always used to bring my golf clubs when I went to play golf at the golf course. He worked in the cart barn at Bel Air Country Club in Bel Air. That's Florida, not California. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say <laughs> Clearwater, everybody. Florida. Guys exchanging information. Their first look at Ryan Weber. Ball is driven in the air. Dyson has been busy this inning, and he's going to get to that one as well. Ranging far and wide, Gerard Dyson's got a lot of speed. He covers a lot of ground, and it's a perfect inning for Dyson. He makes all three outs, three fly balls to center, one in left, and this one a long run as he takes a hit away from Darwin Money. No score after two. on to downtown Pittsburgh where tonight the Penguins and the Senators will open the Eastern Conference Finals 630 on Sportsnet and the CBC no Chris Neal no Chris Kelly for Ottawa in game one to open this set. Buck.
Uh, Rash, they have a tough game to compare themselves to after that Western Conference game won last night out in Anaheim. Terrific game decided in overtime. Ben Gamble has got an infield hit already this afternoon. Hit a grounder to shortstop. Ball on the strike. Get something off that pitch and gets a foul tip. Stroman has five strikeouts through two innings. Slider has been right on early on this game. He's had to pitch around four base runners already, but with those five strikeouts and that good slider going today, that's where you can get yourself out of problems. It's in the air. Pilar with a long run he will get there and Carrera pulls out of his way. One away. This 4K broadcast is brought to you by the Samsung QLED the next innovation in TV. Blue Jays in the outfit are now going to go with some signs to some hand signs as you see Carrera see that one and he peels out of the way. They've been having some problems verbally hearing each other. So Tim Leeper told him you know what start to use some hand signs now wave it off if you've got it also and Carrera peeled out of the way. Last five outs in this ball game have all been recorded by the center fielders Kevin Pillar and Gerard Dyson. Cruz had a base hit through the right side of the infield. Two strike base hit to right. It's a ground ball. A little smile on his face as that ball was spinning up and out over the plate. He has turned into a feared hitter. Spent some time early in his career with Texas. Spent some time with the Mets. He has developed into one of the best power producers in the American League. Yeah, it was really interesting how it took him a while to really develop. He never really got a big chance. His first real opportunity was in 2009 with the Texas Rangers. He spent parts of three seasons there before he got that great opportunity in Texas in 2009. He made the all star team. He had 33 home runs. It was the first time he had more than 307 at bats in his career. He was 28 at that time. He's certainly a late bloomer. Yeah, think about that. 28 years old when he finally put it all together. Broken bat, a little dribbler to short. Goins has plenty of time. Cruz is retired two away. Well, he's making up for lost time now. I'll tell you that. He had some big years. He had the one big year with Baltimore, didn't he? Lead the American League in home runs. When he was there the one year 2014 in fact he's hit 40 or more home runs in the last three seasons. He has been battling some hamstring problems also so he's just going to DH in this series. I asked some of the Seattle people will he play in the outfield to let Cano DH and they said no he's probably just going to DH these four games because his hamstring has been barking a little bit. Kyle Seeger called out on strikes in the first. Stroman got him with an inside fastball. The Mariners have had opportunities, as Pat mentioned. They've stranded four base runners today in the series so far. This is game three. They're just two for 20 with runners in scoring position. That means a lot of zeros. Put up by the Blue Jay pitchers. 19 consecutive innings of shutout baseball. This was a team, the Mariners, who were averaging five runs a game when they came into this series, second in the American League.
Now that a play is now two and two. Marco Estrada getting a little different perspective sitting out in the bullpen. Marco pitched on Thursday picked up the win his second win of the season six good innings four hits and eight strikeouts over six innings. Seager strikes out for a second time. Six strikeouts for Marcus Stroman. He's through three innings. He's allowed just three ground ball base hits. of Marco Estrada. On top of that, it's Mother's Day, of course, so you can join on the 200 level at the West Jet Flight Deck. They've created an oasis dedicated to pampering mom. The finale of the Blue Jays and the Mariners and Marco Estrada bobblehead day tomorrow, 107. BlueJays.com for tickets. Guys. Marco and his mother very close, obviously. Uh, he was raised by a single mom. It's kind of special. His bobblehead will be given away on Mother's Day. And then after the game tomorrow the documentary chronicling the path of Marco from Mexico to Southern California the road. Narrated by Stephen Brunt a terrific documentary. Coughlin goes after the first pitch and it's at a mile high and right. One away. You know when he arrived a couple of weeks ago Luke Maley was thrown right into the fire to learn this pitching staff then Russ Martin goes on the DL and he temporarily has become the guy. It's a challenge for sure Miley said but nothing new in college or pro baseball you have to learn your guys the offensive numbers haven't been there but John Gibbons told him look we just need your defense focus on the pitchers and Maley has he said if they agree with my thoughts on the game plan that's great but if they don't I'll just side with whatever the pitchers want. It's always the best way to go. You keep your pitcher comfortable and confident, you're going to get the best out of him. Looks done a nice job. Making his eighth start here this afternoon. Ground ball, fair ball. Seeger takes his time. Two up, two down. That was the scouting report on Luke Maley that he's a good defender and they'll take whatever they can. Offensively, Kyle Seeger, what a. What a player he is at third base. I don't think he gets the do that uh, other good third basemen get in the American League. Well, it's difficult for Seager to get much attention when you think of the marquee players that play third in the American League. Josh Donaldson, of course, Manny Machado. Look around baseball, Noah and Arenado, some real star impact players playing third base. Evan Longoria for Tampa Bay. Adrian Beltre, Chris Bryant <laughs> for yeah. the Cubs. It's a tough position to really get a lot of name recognition. But he's a good one. First time through the order, Ryan Weber has held the Blue Jays to one hit, a two out double by Bautista. Pilar made a bid for a base hit in his first hit back. He was thrown out on a nice play by the shortstop, Gene Segura. 
Tell you what, he is decked out today, isn't he? He is wearing that uni. The only thing he could have done to add to that was to dye his beard pink. <laughs> <laughs> Looking good. Line over Mater into center field, and Pilar says, You're not going to catch that one. Second hit of the ball game, another two out hit for the Blue Jays. Two strike hit also by the Jays. Taylor Motter was going to bid to steal that one away from him. The Mariners, of course, have four of their starters on the disabled list, and they've had some fill in starters, and in fact, they have surrendered nine or more hits in four straight games. Blue Jays with 10 hits last night, nine hits in the opener on Thursday. No score in a ball game. Blue Jays with just their second base runner. Breaking ball for a strike. Ryan Weber, we mentioned he's not overpowering, but he has left few balls over the middle of the plate. He's going to have to. He's going to have to keep the ball on the edges, down, move it around. Probably going to throw over to first base. Pollard's getting a big lead. And if he can gauge the move of Ryan Weber, I think he's going to try and steal second. Kevin picked up a stolen base in the fifth inning in last night's game, his fifth of the season. He's got the green light. Blue Jays give it to him. So if you feel like you can take it, go ahead and give it a shot. It's a good lead. Not running outside. Ball in his strike. Got to do all the things correctly when you're a pitcher, when you can't just blow it by people. And part of that is holding runners on right here. You don't want to give up a guy with two outs into scoring position. So you hold the ball or you quick pitch him. Have a good move, quick move. There goes Pilar. Goes switches throw is not in time. Stolen base number six for Kevin Pilar. You know what he did right there is Ryan Weber did not make Kevin Pilar stop at first base. He just kept inching off and inching off and taking quick jab steps right here. He turns his back to him. Pilar keeps moving, keeps moving, and steals it easy. Picked on a good pitch, too. A slow breaking ball. Pilar really jammed that right ankle into the base. There's that straight leg, and really felt something in there. Reached down to see if everything was okay. Appears to be all right. How could you not feel fast wearing those shoes? <laughs> <laughs> two and two. Carrera with two outs. Foul ball. How can you tell in a major league game the minor leaguer that's just been called up from the minors? Look around the field and you say, okay, well, that guy's a minor leaguer. How can you tell? Uh, if he's a pitcher or just, just any a player. position player, just a position player, uh, he's clean shaven. <laughs> his shoes, his shoes. He doesn't have any cool shoes. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have the pink ones like everybody else. No, wear are they today. The white shoes and pink shoes and everything else. Ryan just came up from Tacoma, so he didn't have any pink shoes. Two and two. Play. Here comes Pilar. The throw from Gamble is not going to be in time, and Ferreira gives the Blue Jays the lead, his 11th RBI. Zeke had another multi hit game last night, and he's going to come up with his first hit this afternoon. Change up stays back. And when the ball gets by Motter into the outfield, the stolen base by Pilar is going to pay off. 
just can't knock that ball down. You do everything you can as an infielder to at least knock it down. He can't. Carrera's got the RBI, and the Blue Jays have the lead. One nothing Jays. Jose Bautista hit a two out double his first time up. It was after the first pitch. Four homers, 14 driven in for the Blue Jays right fielder. Kevin Pillar with a base hit and the stolen base scores the first run of the game. American League leadoff hitters. Kevin Pillar has six stolen bases. That ties him with Brian Dozier of the Twins for the lead. He too has six. Brett Gardner has five and Gene Segura of the Mariners, he too has five stolen bases among the leadoff hitters. Oh, and two. Bautista had a breaking ball off of Weber for a double. Hit that ball in the alley and left center, his fifth double of the season. And also came with two strikes. Weber is the ninth starter to make a start for the Mariners this season. That ties the Mariners with the Blue Jays for the most starters used. Up the middle, Motter was shaded right there. Steps on the back, that ends the inning, but the Blue Jays score a run. Another two out rally started by Pilar, capped off by Carrera. One nothing, Blue Jays. The ball game Sportsnet presents Marco Estrada the road. It's a compelling behind the scenes look at Marco Estrada's underdog fight from the streets of his hometown of Mexico all the way to the major leagues. One of the great backstories told by Stephen Brunt the road with Marco Estrada tomorrow around 4 Eastern on Sportsnet. Guys. Hey Rash that's a very Good series of documentaries that Stephen Brunt has put together, and Fortunate's done a terrific job of telling the stories of some of their players. Osuna, Sanchez, now Marco Estrada. Danny Valencia takes a first pitch strike. Valencia struck out on a breaking ball. That ended the top of the first. Boy, that's a tough combination. Slider going away, sinker coming in. It's exactly what you want if you're a pitcher. Pitches going in opposite directions. Opposite directions, and if you can throw both of them on each corner, making X's, if you will, on each corner, that's when you're really tough. Valencia, again, Stroman used that quick pitch on him. He was in the set position, got a sign, and just unloaded the pitch. And Valencia looked a little bit frustrated. He was going to get set quickly, I would imagine. 
Another strikeout for Stroman. That's a seven. The all-new 2017 CRV with revamped cargo space. It's the biggest fan yet. Honda, official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays and proud fan since 1977. Taylor Motter, he can swing the bat. He's been aggressive throughout this series. He got a base hit his first time up on a hanging slider on an 0 2 pitch. Stroman zeroed in today. That comeback fastball sinker. He could throw it into righties or he could tail it back on the outside corner. Looks like they're going to go back out there just a little bit further. Says he was just messing around with the grip and said, I wanted to find something else to go along with my slider. And he said, All of a sudden, I found something a couple of years ago that helped him sink the ball. And there was a left handed batter that he pounded inside of that comeback fastball. And he said, Once I threw that, so I knew that I've got something special here. He went. That slider is a wipeout pitch for Strowman this afternoon. That's eight strikeouts through three and two thirds innings. Well, he can really spin a baseball, and he threw a couple of fastballs outside. And then you go to the slider. And as a hitter, you're saying, is he going back out there with that fastball? You start your swing, and then you recognize it's a slider, and you can't hold up. Another strikeout. Guillermo Heredia, the left fielder, makes a first pitch strike. Well, again, a great illustration of balls going in opposite directions. He pushed already back with that inside pitch. The slider and fastball away have been money for Stroman early. Slider chopped toward third. Big hop for Barney. That'll do it. Stroman makes easy work of the Mariners in the top of the foot. When we come back, Kendris Morales will lead things off. His first start in four days. Then Justin Smoke and Ryan Goins. Goins with 13 RBIs so far this season.
presented by Jack Lynx. The first 20,000 fans will receive that Blue Jays cowboy hat. A pregame performance by Southtown will go down on the WestJet flight deck. You can join for an afternoon of baseball with a country twist. BlueJays.com for tickets. Another great promotion here at Rogers Center. Make sure you check that out. Ryan Weber will work to you. Kendrys Morales, and he throws a first pitch strike. Morales tapped out back to the pitcher in the first inning. Kendrys missed three games with a hamstring problem. He has been getting treatment, and he's been running the bases the last couple of days, so he's back in the lineup. Blue Jays have one run on three hits off of Ryan Weber. Weber made five starts for Triple A Tacoma in the Pacific Coast League. Breaking ball. Segura waits for it and will throw quickly to first to get Morales. Super slow mo cam. Brought to you by the Samsung QLED, the next innovation in TV. Justin Smoke hit a ball deep to the alley in left center, and Gerard Dyson ran it down on the warning track in left center. Nice and in that second inning made all three outs. It's one of the things that the Mariners wanted to improve on was some speed in the outfield and they got one in draw Dyson. He was the fourth outfielder for Kansas City. He'd come in and score a lot of runs become a pinch runner late in the game defensive replacement. Here he's an everyday player. And if you've ever been to Safeco Field you know why they need some speed out there. There's a lot of room in the outfield where the Mariners play at home. He can go get him. Break the ball away. It's two and one to smoke. The Blue Jays have won six of the last eight games, trying to win a four game streak for the first time since the end of the 2016 season. Blue Jays won the final two games of the regular season and won four straight to start the postseason. Beat the Orioles in the wild card game, swept the Rangers in the division series, and it's been a long time since John Gibbons has seen a four game win streak. Hooking and it's going to hook foul into the seats. Well, what you're going to get from Ryan Weber, you're not. What you're not going to get is a lot of swing and miss. This doesn't have that swing and miss type of stuff. He doesn't have a strikeout yet this afternoon. Balls are generally going to be put in play. Second time through the lineup, the Blue Jays, their at bats have been just a little bit better this time against him. Full count to smoke. Owens is on deck. Breaking ball, fair ball, knocked down by Valencia. He picks it up and dropped it, picked it up in time to throw out smoke. Two away, and let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Chris Asayo with nine strikeouts trying to rack up ten strikeouts for the seventh time. He's struck out at least ten batters in six consecutive starts coming into this game. What a pitcher. Owens takes a breaking ball from Weber. Weber's been impressive with his ability to throw strikes with his pitches. Fastball counts. He'll throw curveballs. Off speed. Counts. He'll throw fastballs. How about that? Just 12 balls out of the strike zone this afternoon. Both pitchers pounding the strike zone. That looked like a pretty good pitch. Didn't go in Weber's way. Marcus Stroman. 
got eight strikeouts through four innings. Call by Angel Hernandez that pitches the outside corner. One and two, two outs. Blue Jays have a one nothing lead. Ryan Weber in. Uh oh. They yeah. Cramp up. Did you see him shaking it before that pitch? That he was just trying to shake something out of his arm right now. Now timeout. To, it was the, the at bat to to Ryan. He kept trying to shake something out on his arm, and that last pitch, he felt something. Watch him again, just trying to shake this like like there's there's a cramp or there's something. He just can't get it loose. Pitch before that, he stepped off the, the mound and it was shaking it. And whenever you see that, something's not right. And he he felt like something might have popped or something. Yeah, they're not gonna let him continue in this game. Scott Service has already talked to you. Mel Stoudemire, the pitching coach, and that's unfortunate. Brian Weber throwing the ball very well, but he felt something. Looked like in his biceps area, but we have no idea of knowing the extent. But a frustrated young man making his first start for the Mariners has to leave the game with an impaired arm injury. The Seattle Mariners are getting crushed with pitching. Even a guy who's replacing a guy has to walk off of the mound now with an injury. The left hander Dylan Overton will come on and of course he will have as many pitches as he needs to get loose he will inherit a one ball two strike count with two outs here in the fourth and while he gets ready we'll take a break Blue Jays have a one nothing lead. One nothing lead here in the bottom of the fourth and this is Dylan Overton who was acquired in a trade in January from the Oakland A's and he has started he started a while ago let's go back to the starting pitcher Ryan Weber seemed like he was cruising right along and then after this pitch to Ryan Goins stepped back off the mound and he just started shaking his arm just a little bit a little bit more. You could tell that something just wasn't right. Delivers the pitch. And this is where he really feels it, I think. See how he steps off the mound, he feels it, and then he starts really start trying to shake it out. Shake, shake that out and 
that that muscle or whatever the problem was. He delivered another pitch after Go and stepped down and kept feeling it in his arm. I think at this point he's, he's, he knows something just isn't right with with his arm. Yeah, he obviously very concerned about that arm before he delivers this final pitch to Goins. Watch the final pitch how he reacts coming off the mound. He knew it right there. He knew something wasn't right. You can see the body language and the expression on his face. Taylor Motter the second baseman picked up on it. He came in and Scott Service has to deal with another injury to one of their starters. Tough time for a lot of major league managers. Let's check in with Arash Madeni. Well Buck there's actually some encouraging news on the Blue Jays front with Jay Happ. Not only is Happ continuing his throwing program down in Florida that's at 120 feet but the plan is for Happ to be throwing off a mound tomorrow or Monday. Of course it was against Baltimore he started dealing with an elbow inflammation after the bullpen session should he go issue free he'll throw a simulated game and into the minor leagues. And if it's issue free during that whole process and who knows how those ligaments may affect him. If there are no hiccups he could be back here with the Blue Jays in less than a month. Troy Tulowitzki started his rehab assignment in Dunedin today and it was John Gibbons who told us of Tulo Russ Martin and Josh Donaldson of that trio to the Whitsky is closest to return. Well a little bit of good news certainly good with Jay Happ but it's going to be a while before we see him Russell Martin continues to tend to his left shoulder issue. Joe Biagini was terrific for a second time as a starter for the Blue Jays. But Marcus Stroman, boy, he has been great right on his game today as he's held the Mariners to no runs on three hits. The Mariners haven't scored a run in 21 innings. So as Marcus sits back down, two outs, let's take a look at the new pitcher for the Seattle Mariners, Dylan Overton. Six games, no record, a 617 earned run average. He made his first major league start on the seventh of this month. That was against Texas. Been a reliever and a starter. You mentioned, Buck, that he came to the Mariners in a trade with Oakland this past January. In fact, he was the A's second round draft pick in 2013. He's got a plus breaking ball. He had Tommy John surgery in 2013. He's got a good breaking ball and a good fastball. There was some talk that he was going to make this start today, but they went back down to the minor leagues, got Ryan Weber, so the two of them are going to have to deal with it, and this is what they're dealing with right here in Seattle. Yeah, these are the four starters that have been used lately. Bergman with 16 major league starts, Miranda seven, Chase DeYoung, we saw him in the opener. He's only made three starts, and this is the pitcher Dylan Overton, who's made just one major league start, and Ryan Weber today, he made his eighth major league start. So there's a lot of inexperience currently in the rotation for the Mariners. The Mariners starters that are out, they have combined to make 641 major league starts. So they are missing a lot of experienced arms. Just the third time in Mariners history that they've had to use at least nine starters through the first 40 games of a season. That's a fair ball and Danny Valencia can't make the play. Goins is going to go to second at least. Takes another peek over his shoulder and Valencia throws it back in. Goins ends up at second. Probably going to be an air as Valencia had it to his glove side. The ball took a wicked hop went over his glove and it is indeed an air on Valencia just his second of the season. Looked like that was going to end the inning right to him he just missed it he gave ground so he could catch it on the big hop which was OK but he just missed it glanced off of his glove and now Goins is in scoring position the Blue Jays have been taking advantage of some of the mistakes that the Mariners have made a couple of days ago they had two outs nobody on he ended up walking a batter with two strikes and the Blue Jays would end up scoring five runs that air is the 20th of the season committed by the Mariners. Darwin Barney looks at a pitch away. Barney hit a ball in the alley in right center his first time up. It was another long run for Gerard Dyson as he robbed Barney of extra bases.
Strike now, it's two and one to Darwin Barney. Barney playing at third base this afternoon. Before he had the Tommy John surgery, at Overton get it up there into the mid-90s. We had that in 13. The velocity doesn't seem to have come back to that, so he's going to need to locate that fastball. Barney is way into center again. Dyson on the run. He tracks it down. Tough to get it past Gerard Dyson. He tracks it down for a second time against Barney. We've played four innings. The Blue Jays have a one nothing lead. Now time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell with Greg Zahn from the Samsung Broadcast Studio. Regroup on Sunday. That'll be game two, Nashville, Anaheim in Southern California. The Preds, James Neal with the overtime winner last night. They'll get at it tomorrow on Sportsnet 7 Eastern for Pacific. Buck. Thank you very much, Rash. Great time of the sports world. The NBA, the NHL, baseball cranking into their second month of the season. A lot of good things going on. Marcus Stroman, he's got some good things going on. Four innings of shutout baseball. He's allowed just three hits. Gerard Dyson drew a walk against Stroman. His first time up. Chopper, Cogler going to have to hurry. Not in time. There's another indication of Stroman. He gives up a lot of hits, but a lot of hits are just like that. Not real good contact. Ground balls. Two of the hits today have been infield singles. And they found holes through the infield. That time they hit it where no one can get them. You've got to really shorten up. Against Gerard Dyson because he can run. If he doesn't square it up, if he hits a ball like that, there's really no chance anybody can get him out over at first base. So that will be their fourth hit. And they've all been singles. Two of them haven't left the infield. Catcher Tuffy go switch. Don't be surprised if he drops down a bunt. Not showing bunt. Takes one low. Goes with just one for 14 since coming up from Triple A. Nice and looks a little bit anxious at first. Yeah, it's only one to nothing. He has stolen nine bases this year. He's only been thrown out twice. 
So you can use his speed and he knows how to steal bases. We told you when he was with Kansas City he came up with a lot of late game steals. Not running here. Sherman misses it's two and oh. Angel Hernandez telling Marcus that he thought that that ball was down. Blue Jays haven't turned a double play today, due in part to the fact that Strowman has eight strikeouts. There goes the runner. Throw from Maley is a short throw, one hop to Coglin, and Dyson has his tenth steal. Just outran the baseball. Got a decent jump over there at first base. Stroman got rid of the ball quickly, so did Luke Maley, but it's one hop, even if it's on the fly. He just outruns the baseball. Billy Hamilton of the Reds has 19 stolen bases. That leads the majors. Dyson now 10 of 12 in stolen base attempts. He has tied his former teammate Lorenzo Kane for the lead in the American League. Stroman walks the number nine hitter, first and second, nobody out. The Honda Checkered Flag event is back. Get there fast, lead even faster. Saturday afternoon tomorrow of course is Mother's Day so make sure you take your mom take your wife out for a nice dinner tonight do it again tomorrow take her to brunch and then come to the ball game. Gene Segura for two so far Segura has thirty nine hits. So they're not going to take the bat out of his hand. And let him swing away aren't they. Absolutely. They are. Absolutely. There's no bunt in his game. Now I would I wouldn't take the bat out of his hand. He had multi hit games earlier this month in six straight games. Comes in here swinging a hot bat. He's down to 358 with his over two today. I'm letting him swing away. Stroman all of a sudden losing the strike zone. He won't go switch on four pitches and falls behind Segura. The Mariners are one of just two American League teams and have multiple 40 hit players on their roster. Nelson Cruz and Robinson Cano both with 40 hits and Segura has 39. Boston the other team with multiple players with 40 hits Andrew Benintendi and Xander Bogarts. Seattle has three such players. Colorado they too have three players with 40 or more hits. A strike on the inside corner. Two and one now. Oh, he can get his share of ground ball outs. This would be a great time to have one right at the shortstop. Back to Stroman. Second for one. Going to first. There it is. The double play. That's the fourth double play started by Marcus Stroman and the 12th the Jays have turned with Stroman on the mound. It's always in his back pocket. He can get that ground ball out. He gets a tough hitter by making a tough pitch to Segura runs that fastball in on him. He just can't connect through it Then some hesitation. He just throws it to the bag going does the rest. That's what a pitcher is told when you get a comebacker you should know who's covering. But just throw it right to the bag. Twelve Good. double plays with Strowman on the mound matches Dallas Keiko for the most in the American League. John Gibbons 
He's reminding Strowman to tell the umpires what he's going to do. Is he going to be out of the stretch? Or is he going to be out of the windup? It's exactly what it is because he had and he says stretch. So he told the umpire he's going to pitch out of the stretch. And now the umpire will indicate to the rest of the umpiring crew that Strowman is pitching out of the stretch. It's a new rule implemented this year. And it cost Tampa Bay a run this last week it's with called, Matt Andres. It's called the David Price rule. You get a runner at third base. And you have to tell the umpires if you're in the stretch or the windup if you've got that type of windup that Marcus has. Stroman engages the pitching plate with his right foot and his left foot is parallel. So basically he's pitching out of a set position and that's what he proclaimed. This is a fly ball to center. Pilar's on the run. Long run. It's over his glove. Off the wall. Gamble delivers a two out. RBI double to center field and that ends a 21 inning scoreless streak for the Mariners. Hamill's got himself another multi hit game. He came into this game at 328. Spinning slider over the plate and that ball just took off once it got through the infield. That thing just took off and goes over the head of Pilar. No chance for KP to catch that one. So it's a 1 1 game. First time the Mariners have scored since the first inning on Thursday night. Now Nelson Cruz, he's one for two with Gamble at second. Off the end of the bat. The Mariners came into this series with consecutive games in which they put up 15 or more hits, both against the Phillies. Scored 21 runs in two games in Philadelphia. And 32 hits. They got a two run home run by the guy at the plate, Nelson Cruz, in the first inning. And now they score here in the fifth inning in game three. Dyson with an infield hit. He stole second base. Moved to third on the double play. And scores on the double. He's got Cruz reaching. Everything down and away. Cruz struck out against Joe Biagini in the first at bat yesterday on a sinker down and in. Stroman's got that same pitch. Elevates. Yeah, he wanted to go up and in with that fastball. Cruz is a good breaking ball hitter, especially down and away. Up to Kyle Sigurds on deck. He has struck out twice today. Sinking fastball. That does the trick. But the Mariners, on two hits, a walk, and a stolen base, have tied. It up 1 1 as we head to the bottom of the fifth. Then Gamble with the RBI double.
Just a few moments ago, the Washington Nationals announced they have agreed to terms with Bryce Harper on a contract for 2018. That locks up a salary for the final year before free agency. The compensation, $21.62 million, a record for an arbitration-eligible guy. Buck? Pretty interesting contract, and it's kind of surprising they took him just for one year. Takes him up to his free agency, but... Why wouldn't you try to negotiate a longer term deal probably because Bryce Harper didn't want to sign a that, longer term yeah. deal. Is Scott Boris his agent. I believe so. Well, if, if whoever it is as Devin Travis has picked up a bat and he will pinch hit here in the fifth inning. Why would you. Yes. That's going to be a monster free agent class. Devin Travis pinch hitting for Coughlin. Chris Coughlin started. He got just one plate appearance and flied out to right. Travis batting 171. Fouls it back. Devin with eight doubles, a home run, and six RBIs. Tipped it and helicoptered that bat into the seats about four rows deep over the Blue Jays dugout. Doesn't look like Devin wants that one back, so he's going to use a new piece of lumber. That fan get to keep that now. Hopefully everybody's okay in the seats says Travis has a new bat. Devin Travis swings and misses strikes out as a pinch hitter one away. Beauty Tone Canada's color experts available exclusively at home hardware and building center locations. One away, Luke Maley grounded out the third, his first time up. 1 1 ball game, the Mariners tied it up in the top half of the fifth. Dylan Overton took over for Ryan Weber, who left with an apparent injury. Weber threw 55 pitches over three and two thirds. He left the ball game after delivering a 2 1 pitch to Bowens. This ball is hit to left field, but Heredia is there. Maley's retired. Two quick outs here in the fifth. Kevin Pilar, this next at bat will be at bat number 1500 for Kevin Pilar. And that's interesting because Kevin Pillar has really come into his own as a hitter in the big leagues. 1500 career major league at bats as he steps to the plate and you can see now that he's been around pitchers have been able to adjust to him. He's been able to adjust to them and now back to making those adjustments three full years in the big leagues. He's right up there with Starling Castro with hits leaders in the American League 45 now after that last at bat where he's single. Kevin Pillar in his minor league career over five seasons hit 324. He hit well in college, he hit well in high school, and now he's starting to become one of the better hitters in the Blue Jays lineup. In every level that he played in the Blue Jays organization, the coaches raved about what a baseball player he was, that he could hit, that he could field, he was cerebral, he was a good base runner. He was just a good baseball player. They said he was the best player on their team everywhere he went. So it just makes sense that give him a little time at the major league level let them adjust to each other the pitchers and then Kevin. He will turn into a good major leaguer. Kevin began his minor league career in 2011 playing in Bluefield in the Appalachian League and hit 347. The next year he's put time between Lansing and Dunedin. Fly ball deep to right. Gamble on the run, and this ball is off the wall. Pilar is headed for second, and he'll get there standing up. 
His second hit of the afternoon, his 11th double of the season. And that will tie him with Starlin Castro, whose game got rained out. Starlin Castro and now Kevin Pillar lead the American League and hits with 46. That's his 11th double that leads the team. Yeah, I don't blame you. I'd like to be like Kevin, too. Change up, up and away to Pilar. Shows you that patience, stays behind the ball, doesn't try and do too much with it, just go with it. Hits it over the head of Gamble, who plays it on a bounce very quickly with his bare hand, but that's still not going to be enough time to get Pilar. He makes it easily. Pilar and Correra, one, two, and the Blue Jays lineup have done a terrific job in this series. They had four hits in the game last night. They've got three hits already this afternoon. Carrera takes one down and away. Carrera homered on Wednesday in his final game against the Indians, and then he had a two hit game Thursday. Two more hits yesterday, and he's got one already today. Carrera drove in the Blue Jays' run. It's two and one. Tell you what, anything into left field or center field, they are shallow for Carrera. Heredia, the left fielder, is shallow. We've seen him, Carrera, drive balls to left field this year. They must be playing for the play at the plate if there's a base hit. He can hit the ball over their heads. Off the plate. Bautista on deck. Tony Zick. Loosening up. He has not appeared in this series to this point. 3-1 count on Carrera. Fly ball, not deep. Gamble gives way to the center fielder Dyson and the inning is over to out double left on base. We've played five here at Rogers Center. It's a 1 1 game. Elite MasterCard, Canada's number one rated travel rewards card. Great turnout at the WestJet flight deck out in center field here this afternoon. Enjoying those comfy green chairs in the TD Comfort Zone, our guests from one of TD's community partners. Another good crowd on hand and that family having a good time, enjoying the 
comfy green chairs in the TD Comfort Zone. Devin Travis takes over defensively at second base. Kyle Seeger takes the first pitch strength from Marcus Stroman. Seeger has struck out both times, once looking, once swinging. Nine strikeouts for Marcus today. Off the end of the bat. One away. He's had a good breaking ball today. He's also had a pretty good sinker. He's up to 89 pitches here in the sixth inning. Last time out, Marcus only had one strikeout. I think that really shows his versatility when. He's on his game and has that nasty slider working. He's going to get a lot of strikeouts. And when he doesn't, he's going to use his sinking fastball and change up to get some weak contact. Yeah, it shows you that he can pitch here. And if you don't have the strikeout stuff, he can still win your ball games. Danny Valencia's had a hard time with Strowman, and Marcus has really been aware that he's going to disrupt his delivery times. And he pauses, he hesitates, and then he works quickly. Right then he went from a set position. Well Valencia gets set and he's got a lot of movement in his swing. He likes to load up on that back leg pick up the front leg and drops his hands and then he's got to get it back up. So Marcus is trying to disrupt his timing at the plate. By hesitating and by quick pitching. Breaking ball got too much of the plate. Valencia with a one out single. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Thank you very much, Jamie. And Chris Sale has 11 strikeouts. Seven straight starts. Chris Sale has recorded 10 or more strikeouts. First pitch swinging is Taylor Motter hits a lazy fly ball to center. Pilar is there, two away. For sale, that's the second time he has done that in his career. He had a similar stretch of seven straight, ten strikeout games in 2015. In fact, that streak in 15 was eight straight games. Only he and Pedro Martinez in Major League history have put together those streaks, seven or more. Consecutive starts with 10 or more strikeouts. He's done it twice. Two outs. Guillermo Heredio for two with a strikeout. We just got to notice that Ryan Weber, the pitcher for the Mariners left the game with right shoulder tightness and it was interesting he was looking at his bicep and according to the Mariners it was right shoulder tightness he left the game. There's another weekly hit base hit through the right side for Heredia. The Mariners with seven hits and the Gamble double was really the only hard hit ball. Everything else kind of ground balls it snuck through. Yeah, it's their only extra base hit was that double. This time he makes a good pitch and jams already inside outs the ball. This could have easily gone to one of the fielders on the right side but it finds the outfield. Seven hits now for the Mariners. Gerard Dyson has walked and singled. He singled to start the fifth an infield hit right to the second baseman Cochran and he stole second. He scored the Mariners run. Leonel Campos loosening up for the Blue Jays. Blue Jays bullpen has been on some run here lately. Everybody stepping up, picking up for the slack of Joe Biagini going into the rotation. So one one ball game the Mariners have out hit the Blue Jays seven to four.
Up the middle, through for a base hit. Here comes a runner around third. There'll be no throw. Danny Valencia scores the go ahead run. Dyson with his second hit of the afternoon picks up the RBI. That gives him nine. In the first couple games in this series, they had kept Gerard Dyson quiet. He has an infield hit, a walk, and now this single back through the middle is going to score Valencia with two outs, break the tie. Another ground ball that finds the outfield. Number nine hitter Tuffy Goswitch. Two one Seattle. Danny Valencia. Got a one out base hit. Comes around to score the go ahead run. Ground ball to Goins. He'll go to second. That'll end the inning. But Seattle scores a run on three hits and takes the lead as we head to the bottom of the sixth. There's another at the CF Toronto Eaton Center. They are the official team shops for the Toronto Blue Jays. They have authentic alternate red caps and jerseys available now. You can get yours today at select Jays Shop locations at jaysshop.ca or by calling 1 877 Jays Shop. Marcus Stroman through six innings and now a new pitcher for. The Mariners Tony Zick making his 10th appearance Dylan Overton came in and did a nice job gave up a double and nothing more. Zick is now 26 years old. He was originally signed by the Cubs. Seattle acquired him in a minor league trade April 2nd 2015. He has spent some time the last two seasons in the majors with Seattle last year appeared in 12 games. At a 1 0 record. That's his only win in his major league career for his career. This will be his 35th appearance. He was placed on the disabled list right at the end of spring training, activated the middle of April. So just nine games for Zick this season. That's Barksdale down at first base, saying no swing by Bautista. Mariners lead it two to one. The Blue Jays have just four hits on the afternoon. Blue Jays haven't seen much of Tony Zick, the only guy in there 
roster that has an at bat against him is out of the game. Chris Coughlin started and he's been pinch hit for. Jason Grilly starting to crank it up for the Blue Jays in their pin. High pop up, shallow right out into the outfield is the second baseman. Mottery makes the catch. One away. Hit a home run with any project this season. Home Hardware, proud sponsor of the Toronto Blue Jays. It's shot of the Rogers Center, CN Tyler from Center Island. And now uh, Kendrick Morales will bat for a third time today. A couple of ground outs so far. Dylan Overton went an inning and a third, allowed just that one hit to double to Pilar. He had a strikeout in an inning and a third. Been a problem also for Seattle. We talked about their starters. The middle relief has been okay. They're good at the back end. Tony Zick's going to give up this seventh home run to Kentris Morales. And if you're going to hit him, that's how you want to hit him if you've got a sore hamstring. So you can just jog around the bases. Well, what a welcome return for the Blue Jays having his back back in the lineup. That's the first home run surrendered by. Tony Zick. That ties it up 2-2. Two, two. The RBI his 21st that ties him with Justin Smoke for the team lead. What a beautiful swing stays back recognizes it and look at the front side open up and the barrel come through. On a nice little uppercut, gets it airborne and out of here. That's past Segura into the outfield. He was playing out there in shallow center field, and Smoke hit it so hard it skipped right past him. Base hit for Justin Smoke. He was so deep, and he was going to play that one off to the side. Those are the kind where you say, I'm not getting in front of that one. He hit it way too hard. There's Segura in the outfield. Just scoots right on by him. That was a hard hit ball, and Smoke ends up with a base hit. His first hit of the afternoon. The home run by Morales, the 18th home run the Blue Jays have hit in their last 12 games. Big part of their game. Coming back to play. Yes, sir. Big yeah. man. Big swing. Tie game. Don Givens with a message for Marcus Stroman. Pete Walker. Some more encouragement, I'm sure. Stroman was good. A couple of ground balls that snuck through the infield. This afternoon might be done. Let's get him a run right here so he has a chance for the win. Brian Goins reached on an air his last time up. Hit one past Danny Valencia. Valencia got a glove on it, but couldn't make the play. Goins ended up in second. Mel Stottlemyre, the pitching coach, has come out of the Mariners' bullpen. Zick has fallen behind 2 0 after a home run and a single. Ryan Weber started 
his first start as a Mariner he went three and two thirds innings we've been told he left with right shoulder tightness he was good held the Blue Jays to a run on three hits over three and two thirds Marcus Stroman was good as well see so ever nine strikeouts two runs on eight hits he started another double play. Fouls it back. Dick's got a pretty good arm. I've seen some 95s and some 96, but he's left a couple of balls up to Blue Jay lefties. There hasn't been a lot of movement on his fastball either. I think that's what Bautista was talking about. Like the fastball seemed pretty straight to him. Two and one to Goins. Now it's three and one. Darwin Barney is on deck. Darwin has hit the ball hard twice today with nothing to show for it. He's got to hit it to some place other than center field. Don't hit it so hard. I mean, he has scorched a couple of balls into the gap. This one's foul down the left field line. Heredia will watch it sail into the seats out of play. Tony Zick in the game, and Nick Vincent, boy, he is heating up in a hurry. He has been on a big run. He's on a 13 inning scoreless streak. And he got the message to get ready, get loose quickly. Might take relievers about 12 to 15 throws to get loose. There goes the runner, and Goins puts it in play. They had the shortstop covering, and that allows Goins to bounce the ball right through the shortstop hole. So Ryan picks up his first hit. That's three hits in a row. How about that? You couldn't ask for a better run and hit by the Blue Jays. Watch Segura to the left of your screen at shortstop. He recognized that smoke is taking off. He goes to second base, vacates his position, and Goins just wraps the ball right where he was standing for a hit. Right, the kind of interesting coverage you throw a left handed batter outside and you have the shortstop cover. Chances are that's where the ball is going to be put into play. So the Blue Jays will take it. They now have seven hits Darwin Barney with runners at first and second. Mariners took the lead in the top half of this inning, and the Blue Jays have tied it on Kendris Morales' seventh homer of the season. Barney, Segura, flips to second for one, back to first, not in time. Barney legged it out, hustling down the line to keep the inning alive. The Mariners are going to have a look at it on video. They're going to look at everything. They're going to look at the slide at second base. They're going to look at the play at first base. If he was out or safe. He only got 30 seconds. Valencia stretches. Remember it was called safe on the field. And he is on that base. Looks like he is safe. The Mariners will not challenge this call. Another look at it as. Darwin stretches for that bag and hits it ahead of the ball meeting the glove of right. Valencia the front part of the bag too which is important he got there quickly and beat it out Devin Travis came into the game in the fifth inning as a pinch hitter and struck out. Smoke at third Barney at first.
Breaking ball a little bit further away that time. It's a one two. Slider a little bit better than the fastball. Hit in the air. Barney was on the move. It's popped up on the infield, and that'll do it. But the Blue Jays get a home run from Kendris Morales. His seventh home run of the season has tied it up. Jason Grilly will come on in his 2 2 game, facing the top of the order. of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership. Tomorrow is Mother's Day. The players wearing their pink spikes gloves using pink bats. The Blue Jays using their alternate pink uniforms. They'll wear them again tomorrow in honor of Mother's Day and Major League Baseball with the initiative to raise awareness of breast cancer across the major leagues. Now Jason Grilly into work after six strong innings from Marcus Stroman. Second time that we have seen Jason in this series. He came in the other day, and first game of this series. He gave up a leadoff double to Nelson Cruz. He also gave up a single, but no runs as he finished that inning off by striking out Mike Freeman. Grilly's fastball has been good. His breaking ball is starting to show signs of a little bit more depth and putting it in a good place. Blue Jays bullpen has really stepped up here in the month of May. They have led the American League in innings pitched. They have thrown 43 and two thirds innings in this month. They've actually thrown the most bullpen innings in the American League, fourth most in the majors, 133 and two thirds innings. Over the last eight games, the bullpen has Posted a 165 earned run average. That's popped up behind home plate and out of play. Over the last 13 games, the Blue Jays bullpen has really been effective and they have stepped it up, Pat. You mentioned the inning, one of those one of the reasons why there was some ineffective by some of the starters getting knocked out early. You also had the injury to Aaron Sanchez where he threw just one inning. So they had to cover it. That's Dominic Leone on the left, Aaron Loop on the right. So they've had their chances and they're making the most of it. John Gibbons has done a good job of bringing the right guys in at the right time in the game, where they are in the lineup, what the score is. And he's done a good job of matching up his relievers versus the opposition. And he's got a lot of options now as everybody has really stepped it up, throwing the ball well. 
So you don't have to use guys multiple games in a row. You can mix it up. Really gets that pitch in on the hands of Segura. Segura 0 for 3 so far in this game. Came into this game with an 11 game hit streak. See, third longest active hit streak. Xander Bogarts went into today's game with a 15 gamer. Matt Kemp has a 12 game hit streak going on. Back again. Ow, ow. That must have hurt your hand a little bit. For Grilly, this is his fifteenth appearance of the season. Segura hanging tough. You can see why he's such a tough out. He can handle the pitches from everywhere in the strike zone. Up and away, down and in, down and away, up and in, doesn't matter. He's now fouling those pitches off to keep this at bat alive. I think with the count one and two here, you can throw a pitch off the plate. He does. Barney coming across and he won't be able to make the play. Got a glove on it. It was going to be a tough play for Barney. And in the transfer, he never got the ball in his throwing hand. And Segura is aboard with an infield hit. You know, you can throw a ball off the plate because he doesn't want to strike out. He's been trying to keep everything in play. He makes a good pitch. And you can see the short hop. That that in-between hop like that. Is a tough play for any infielder. Segura aboard for the first time today. That'll extend his hit streak to 12 straight games. Ben Gamble is two for three. And an RBI double in the fifth that tied the game at 1 1. He ended there. It's two and zero. Oh. Tough part of the lineup for the Mariners: Gamble, Cruz, and then Seager. Two, three, and four in the Mariner lineup. You got a lot of 300 hitters you got to deal with with this lineup. They have five 300 hitters, only four active. Mitch Hanniger on the DL. It's so foul. Stroman, another solid start. He ends up with a no decision. Six innings, eight hits, two earned runs. He only walked two and struck out nine. A hundred pitches on the nose, and he had a very good slider early in this game. He had eight strikeouts through four innings. They're sinking the ball pretty nicely too. A couple of those were infield hits. A couple of them were seeing eye ground ball hits. But he gave his team a chance to win this game. Fly ball to center. Segura going back to first to tag. Pilar is deep. Here's the throw to second. And Segura will hold his ground. Nice job by Pilar. He sensed it was so deep that Segura would try to advance. And boy, he unloaded a great throw. The corner outfielders have to be the eyes of that center fielder when he goes back there because he's concentrating on the baseball. So they become the eyes and they tell him they are tagging at first base. Kevin plants that back foot and unloads very quickly. And Pilar's throw is right on line. 
Segura goes to tag up, and all you have to do is just read the throw. If it's online, stop and go back. Good play by Pilar. That keeps the double play in order. And of course, Kevin Pilar has a lot of fans here at the ballpark. Nelson Cruz had a base hit his first time up. Blue Jays trying to stretch their winning streak to four straight. Really got that ball inside and tied up Cruz. Robinson Cano has not played in this series. He's dealing with a leg injury. Took batting practice today on the field with the team. They asked the Scott Service yesterday if he was available to even pinch in, and he said no. That was yesterday. I don't know if that's changed today. Quick turnaround Saturday. Another base hit to the opposite field for Cruz. He stays inside that ball. Picks up his second hit to right. Segura moves into scoring position at second. And John Gibbons already made the call. Kyle Seeger, left-handed hitter, is the scheduled batter. So Grilly, once again, gives up two hits, but one was a swinging month, the third, the other a fisted ground ball through the right side. And now he'll look to Aaron Loop to bail him out of this situation here in the seventh. Two on, one out. Kyle Singer will face Loop when we come back in this 2 2 game. Letter is the Palace battles Hull City. West Ham gets Liverpool and Tottenham takes on Man United. Sunday on Sportsnet World, you can subscribe at sportsnet.ca slash world. Saturdays are for the boys, but I don't know about that. The pitcher is Aaron Loop, his 16th appearance of the season loops really been throwing the ball well of late like the rest of his bullpen mates it's three days in a row for Aaron uh, he has been used as a situational lefty the last couple of nights when lefties come in he will face Kyle Seeger Seeger's one for four in his career off of Aaron loop Aaron faced the one batter yesterday it was Ben Gamble and got him on a ground out. He's got Seeger, the lefty here. There's a right-hander on deck, and Dominic Leone warming up. So 
John Gibbons has brought him in in these tough situations against lefties. Done a good job this year getting out of it. One out. It's a 2 2 ball game. Keeping an eye on Segura. Segura had an infield hit to start the inning. Then Gamble flied out deep to center. Cruz had a ground ball through the right side. Mariners with 10 hits now. That's a foul ball. Battle of the bullpens this afternoon. Inside. Loops got that big sweeping breaking ball now after pushing Seeger back with the first three pitches of this at bat. Might be a good time for that slider. He likes to use it against the lefties, sweep it against them. He's got to throw for a strike here. He doesn't want to go three and one. Came back with the fastball. Aaron's velocity is up a couple miles an hour over last year. And he was dealing with arm issues early last season. Trying to pitch through some pain. Came back after an injury early. Wanted to get out there. It just didn't look right. That last fastball was 93. Again, three days in a row for Luke. That's off the glove, and the runners are going to move up. So that takes the Mariners out of a double play situation. And that runs the count to three and two. Maybe he wants the infield in now. Two strikes on the batter. He's guessing that. There's going to be a two strike approach. Yanks that ball away from from Maley and the runners move up with two strikes. He's gambling that there's going to be a two strike approach by Seeger hoping that he doesn't hit the ball very hard. Wild pitch charged to loop runners at second and third now. Infield in and he waves at that breaking ball. Oh big strike out for loop. He saved that breaking ball for the pitch of decision and got the strikeout and John Gibbons now will come on and make a move for Danny Valencia. Well he told you he kept that in that back pocket it's a little bit harder slider he sweeps it away from a pretty good hitter and comes up with a really big strikeout. He did his job get the lefty without a run scoring and they will turn it over to Dominic Leone. Dominic Leone will come into the ball game with runners at second and third two outs and they'll face Danny Valencia who's had a hit in three trips this afternoon.
inning, gave up a couple of scratch hits. Loop struck out Seeger. And now into the ball game, Dominic Leone to face Danny Valencia right on right. Dominic Leone, the former Mariner, into the ball game. He spent some time in 2014 and 15 with the Mariners. Last year he was with Arizona. He has done a good job coming in in these situations and getting big outs. He gets a lot of strikeouts with his breaking ball. Leone had a heck of a season in 2014 as a 22 year old pitching for Seattle. He went 8 and 2 in 57 games. First pitch strike. Nothing like it for a reliever. Get ahead early. Come in and fire. He's got a good arm. Really impressed the Blue Jays in spring training with his ability to throw strikes and get big strikeouts, especially with that off speed pitch, the breaking ball. Bouncing ball. Easy play for Barney. He makes it no problem. Good job by Leon. He strands a couple of inherited base runners once again. The Blue Jays bullpen continues to roll. function or outing with family and friends check out an Acura luxury suite where you can entertain from 16 to 300 guests again executives will find a package that best suit your needs 416-341-1635 or bluejays.com slash luxury suites good crowd on and it's junior jays this saturday and all the youngsters will run the bases after this ball game it's always a popular day blue jays a good crowd on hand here today and they've been entertained a terrific game it's 2 2 Nick Vincent into the ball game to face the number nine hitter Luke Maley. first pitch is inside Vincent 13 consecutive scoreless innings he and Mark Zepchinski the left hander are on long scoreless streak look at those great numbers for Vincent Bailey hits it high down the left field line Heredia over near the wall reaches in and makes the catch that ball was foul into the seats and Heredia stayed with it made nice play first time of the inning hit high enough for the speed of Heredia to get over there fans reach for it but it's Heredia who gets it for the first out Nick Vincent likes what he sees told you his numbers he's only walked three batters all year he has retired now 36 of the last 44 batters that he has faced he's got a great cutter Vincent originally signed by the Padres in 2008 Seattle picked him up for a player to be named later you know, on March 30th 2016 last year he got into 60 games with the Mariners and four and four. Kevin Pillar, two more hits this afternoon. His average up to 311. 
There's that cutter. It's hard at 87. Yeah, it's hard. It's got a lot of movement on it, too. He can throw it inside. He can throw it outside. He's going to throw it 49% of the time. Vincent picked up a win last year against the Blue Jays. September 21st pitched the 11th and 12th innings as the Mariners walked off the Blue Jays 2 to 1. That's going to be out of play. Kevin Pilar with two more hits and he hit his 11th double his last time up. Scored the first Blue Jay run in the third. Just the second at bat for Pilar against Vincent. Back end of the bullpen has been good for Scott Service and the Mariners. Going to be into the seats. He's throwing him a couple of pitches that he could hit. He just missed them. Fastball is right down the middle. He's another one of those Long Beach State guys, Nick Vincent. We've seen them all over baseball. Junior College, Palomar Junior College, then to Long Beach State. Pilar gets another hit into center. Another three hit game for Kevin Pilar. Kevin, and he is swinging it. He was on base three times last night, and now he is on base three times this afternoon. That's the fifth time this season that he has reached base three times in a game. He had a stolen base last night. He's had one today. That's a nice, easy swing. Doesn't try and do too much with it. Use your hands. And he rips that into center field. With that hit, his third of the day, he has now taken the lead in hits in the American League. He has leapfrogged over Starlin Castro. 47 hits for Pilar. Ezekiel Carrera, he goes after that cutter. Carrera, one for three with an RBI, and an RBI single in the third. Dylan Overton took over for Ryan Weber, the starter who left with an injury in the fourth. Overton went an inning and a third. Tony Zick pitched the six and gave up the game tying home run. That home run to Kendris Morales. Both of these teams have had problems with their starters because of injuries, so they have really stacked their bullpens. There's a lot of pitchers in each of these bullpens. One and two to Carrera. Off the glove of Segura and Pilar is going to get to second. Segura dove to his left, got a glove on it, knocked it down. That should be a hit for Carrera. Boy, the top of the order has done a great job, Pilar and Carrera, in this series. They've been on base time and time again. They're setting it up, and Pilar, uh, Pilar has not sure with that ball if he was going to catch it or not so he can't go first to third just wasn't real sure Segura was going to catch this line drive it glances off of his glove into short center field so Kevin moves up 90 feet but you're right top of the lineup has given the Blue Jays a lot of opportunities this afternoon to score runs Pilar and Carrera have five hits between them this afternoon Bautista had a double his first time up he's one for three Jim.
Joe Smith standing by in the Blue Jays bullpen. Grilly Loop and Leone to this point out of the pen for the Jays. A little good cut. That ball up a bit for Bautista. Jose 0 for 2 going up against Vincent. He had his struggles early on and is starting to come around. He had a home run last night. He's got a double tonight. Started a home run on Wednesday. Starting to catch that ball out in front just a little bit more consistently. Vincent just made a toss to Motter, who is about 15 feet away from second. Maybe just to break the ice a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Ball in the strike to Bautista. Swinging a drive deep to center field. Get up. Start to see good things happen at the middle of the lineup, and Jose Bautista in particular, catching the ball out in front, the way the ball comes off his bat, the way he takes pitches, how he sees the pitches. Right now, he's starting to see the ball clearly. Nick Vincent will give up his share of fly balls, and Jose put a charge into that one. Home run number five. Three RBIs gives him 17. Morales lifts a fly ball to center. Dyson is there, two down. Bautista's a second three run a home run on this homestand. That cutter didn't break. Squares that one up, grits his teeth, and lets it go. You can see how he's catching that ball out in front before he was getting beat. And it's not by much, it's just a little. Catches it out in front, that thing takes off. The fan makes a great catch, and the dugouts loving what they see. That snaps Vincent's scoreless inning streak. He had a 13 consecutive innings pitched without allowing a run, and Morales with congratulations to Bautista, who has broken the tie. The Blue Jays with a 5 2 lead now. The Mariners, their fifth straight game, allowing nine or more hits. Smoke may have broken his bat. This is a pop up. Motter way out in the outfield makes the catch with the Blue Jays. Snap the 2 2 tie. Pilar, Herrera, and Bautista have combined for seven of the Blue Jays' 10 hits, and this one a three run home run to give the Blue Jays a 5 2 lead. Number five for Bautista.
Wanda, official vehicle of the Blue Jays and proud fan since 1977. Well, if you were with us about five minutes ago, you just saw our drive of the game. The ball was up in the air, didn't cut. Jose Bautista, he has now had three home runs in his last four games. This is his 11th career home run versus Seattle. Drills it into the WestJet flight deck for this afternoon's drive of the game. Two big sluggers going deep today. Kendris Morales with his seventh. Jose Bautista with his fifth. And the Blue Jays have a 5-2 lead. We move to the eighth, and with that, here is Joe Smith, who's taken over this eighth inning rule. Look at the numbers that Joe has put up in 18 games this year. No record, but a 212 earn run average. His fastball's been good. He's been getting a lot of movement on it. He's been putting it in a good spot, and his slider's been good. Two home runs this afternoon. That makes it 19 home runs in the last 12 games for the Blue Jays, and that sounds a lot better. Taylor Motter, second baseman, is one for three. Jason Grilly, Aaron Loop, Dominic Leone, now Joe Smith out of the Blue Jays bullpen. Yes, he did. Another strikeout for the Blue Jays. And another strikeout for Joe Smith. It's 26 of them down to go with five walks. A couple of fastballs to get ahead and then make quick work of Taylor Monter by showing him the slider with two strikes. Taylor can't hold up. He strikes out for the second time this afternoon. 11 strikeouts for the Blue Jays. Joe Smith, 178 career holds as third among active relievers. Ground ball past Barney. Heredia is aboard with a one out single. He's two for four. Darwin in on the grass to protect against the the bunt. And Heredia slaps it by him. Gerard Dyson, we mentioned he's a tough customer to double up. He hasn't hit into a double play this season. Coming into this game, the hardest to double up. 112 at bats. Now 114 and no ground into double plays. That's James Pazos, who's got a real good fastball. I think the infield has to shorten up and if there is a grounder just make sure you get one. And if you can finish the double play if it's a one hopper right at the one of the middle infielders as Mike Freeman has picked up a bat who will pinch hit. If it's a one hopper at the middle of the diamond one of the middle infielders then go ahead but just a regular routine ground ball just make sure you get one. There goes the runner strike two throw to second and a good one he got him. Right on the money Luke Maley threw a strike to second. Well scratch everything I just said because Luke Maley bailed him out. That was an outstanding throw. Heredia got a quick lead quick jump picked on the right pitch a slider. But look at the throw from Manley. It's right on the bag. Well, the Mariners want to have a umpire review of this play. There's the extension of the hand, and it looks like Goins got the glove on it before he hit the bag. That'll be a tough one to overturn in my mind. Look at the position of Goins. Right down on top of the bag and puts the tag on Heredia. That one shot we had, the bag didn't move and the glove was on his hand right there. See he still hasn't hit the bag. He's out. Now it moves. He is out. Great shot. Great camera work and that slow motion camera really allows you to break things down. A little surprise they tried to run in that situation. Yeah because you've got some speed you're down by three runs you've got some speed at the plate you're looking for base runners 
you're at the bottom of the lineup you need base runners. I think this is an easy decision right here for the crew. Ted Barrett is the crew chief he's in that frame they have a decision now watch him he'll give the signal out the call is upheld perfect job by Mailey. He nails already at second that's the second out of the inning and certainly changes the complexion of this inning. Yes it does and the pitch was a strike so it's one and two he's a pitch from getting out of this inning. What a throw. Two away. Popped up and over the Blue Jays dugout out of play. Boy Jays are playing some good baseball. Playing great defense, getting good pitching, timely hitting. We mentioned the home runs. And that despite the fact they have 14 all-star selections on the disabled list. Missing some key parts of this team, but they are grinding away the wins. Bautista coming around at the plate delivering some big hits. And they should be starting to get some of these guys back over the next week or two tomorrow. Aaron Sanchez comes back and makes the start coming off the disabled list. He will be certainly welcome back. Morales came back today and Sanchez starts. Morales had missed three straight games with a hamstring problem. Tulowitzki is playing in a rehab game this afternoon. Dyson reaches for it. Donaldson is supposed to play. We heard some good news from Arash Madani earlier in the game about Jay Happ has completed his throwing progression up to 120 feet. Now the next move is to get him on the mound. Pre game at 1230 Jamie and Greg will have it all for you and set up the game. That's 930 Pacific time. Another foul out of play. Blue Jays looking for their first four game win streak since the end of the season last year. They won the final two games of the regular season won the wild card game and then swept the Texas Rangers in the division series. It doesn't seem like much but a win today would get the Blue Jays to five games under 500. The Atlanta Braves will be here Monday and Tuesday part of a home and a home four game series. Atlanta is 12 and 20 and they are two and eight in their last 10. Dyson has been a tough customer for Joe Smith. Fouled off some fastballs They tried to nibble on that outside corner. Got to challenge him. And he loses him. Dyson walks for a second time. So now Mike Freeman will come up and pinch hit for the catcher, Tuffy Goswitch. Freeman started on Thursday night. He started in second and went 0 for 4 with a couple of strikeouts. For the season, Freeman batting. 074 just two hits in 27 at bats and with a rather short bench told you that Cano is unavailable. They've got Freeman and Ruiz and with this move right here this is probably going to deplete their bench. Cano obviously not even getting into the mindset of possibly hitting. There goes the runner and is fouled off. Dyson took off and Freeman is behind 0 and 2. Blue Jays had a 1 nothing lead. The Mariners tied it up in the fifth. Seattle took a lead in the sixth at 2 1, but the Blue Jays tied it up on the Morales home run. In the sixth inning, and then Bautista, a three run shot. Deep to center field. He's given the Blue Jays this 5 2 lead.
Joe doesn't even need to worry about that runner at first base. If he steals it, no big deal. Get that guy hit it. Joe Smith, the fourth reliever to work this afternoon for the Jays. Strowman went six innings and he was good. He had eight strikeouts, allowed two earned runs on eight hits. Had nine strikeouts. This is a fly ball. Herrera now backtracking and he's there. That'll do it. Joe Smith leaves a base runner on. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. Blue Jays have a 5 2 lead. Now, time for Blue Jays Central Update. Here's Jamie Campbell with Greg Zahn from the Samsung Broadcast Studio. is back and better than ever you can watch every out of market regular season game live on over 400 supported devices and get a free subscription to at bat premium the number one app for live baseball blackout and other restrictions apply visit mlb.tv for details thank you very much that's a rash for Danny Buck Martinez and Pat Tabler with you here from Rogers Center this is James Pazos the hard throwing lefty making his 15th appearance he got him from the Yankees James Pazos uh, that last November he's got a great arm fastball can touch 98 he's got a true slider at times he, he'll lack command but this year doing much better as Carlos Ruiz has also taken over at catcher he's not allowed to run in 12 of the 14 outings this year Pazos. It's also 0 for 1 in saves and he has a hold this year. Ryan Goins has a hit. He is 1 for 3 reached on an air in the 4th single. Of Tony Zick in the 6th. Blue Jays snapped Nick Vincent's scoreless streak he came in. Having pitched 13 consecutive scoreless innings, he gives up three runs on one swing of the bat. Look mm. out. That's a slider. That one got away from him. Told you he, at times, he will lack command. He's got a great arm. At times, he will walk batters and miss his spots. This is a slider. He wants it down and away. It slips out of his hand and it goes right over the head of Ryan Goins. One and two now. Just foul. Goins making a bid for an extra base hit. Slice that just fouled down the left field line. 
The Blue Jays get two more home runs this afternoon. They have now hit 41 home runs for the season. Bautista's home run came in the seventh. It's the 20th home run for the Blue Jays in the seventh inning or later. Only the Washington Nationals have hit more. They've hit 21 home runs, seventh inning or later. Cohen, stay hot, Ryan. That's tough to overcome when you hit those late home runs, but it's all set up because Marcus Stroman got the Blue Jays off with a very solid outing. For the afternoon, Marcus is going to be credited with six innings. He only gave up two earned runs, a couple of walks, and nine strikeouts. The slider was working, his sinker was working. He can go upstairs at times when he wants to. And of course, he's got another double play. That was a big one against the American League's leading hitter. And Gene Segura, Marcus Stroman getting the Blue Jays a great effort. Nine strikeouts this afternoon. That's the second highest strikeout game he's had this season. He had 10 strikeouts against Tampa Bay back on the 28th of April. Blue Jays with now 11 hits. Darwin Barney, 0 for 3. Blue Jays are playing with a lot of confidence. A win here this afternoon, they would improve to eight and four in May. Lost a lot of games earlier. They were right there. Now they're making the breaks for themselves. They're coming up with those clutch hits. They're making those clutch pitches. They're making the plays defensively. One one inside right on the corner. A win today would guarantee they would win the series. That would be three straight series wins for the Blue Jays. They also continue their trend of playing well in May. And the second highest win percentage in May since 2014 trailing just the Houston Astros. Barney. Chases that low breaking ball and strikes up. First out of the inning. Leonel Campos has been up a couple of times earlier in this ball game. Roberto Osuna standing by in case there is a save opportunity online. Hey, after that hit by Goins, if the Blue Jays score a run, they might go to Compost and get Osuna the afternoon off. It's a safe situation, though. They don't score. I'm sure we'll see Roberto. Roberto, like the rest of his bullpen mates, really throwing the ball well lately. Breaking ball. Travis did not start the game. He came into the ball game in the fifth inning as a pinch hitter for Chris Coughlin, who started at second. Devin has struck out and popped out. Good to have that man back healthy and in the lineup. Kendris Morales tied it up with a solo home run. Made it a 2 2 game. Travis bounces this ball towards second. Mater slips and will not get anybody out. Mater really trying to force the issue. Didn't have much of a chance. It was a low percentage play to stop and go back trying to get the lead runner. It'll be an air on the second baseman. 
You know what you have to remember? Where are you in the lineup? This is an out. This would be number two in the inning. Then you face the number nine hitter. Just trying to make something happen where he really didn't have to as his feet slip on the turf. He thought about going there because Goins stopped, let the ball go by him in front of him, and then Motter tries to make the play, but plays just get the out over at first base. So now Luke Maley can hit with just one out. Goins breaks before Pazos was ready, and he's safe. Seeger with a very nonchalant tag on Goins, and Ryan beat the tag into third. He just kind of laid the glove down there, anticipating he was going to be an automatic out, and Goins eludes the tag. I agree. When you get caught out there like that, just go as fast as you can. That's a good call. He slid to the outside part of the bag, and he's safe. High tag from Seeger. Stolen base for Goins, his first of the season. That's a big 90 feet now. If Malik can hit one to the outfield, Blue Jays can add to their lead. It's, it's a big run also because then Osuna might not be in the game. You can rest him for tomorrow. Osuna threw 14 pitches in last night's game in a non save situation. So he's just standing by. He might be just about loose. Yeah, he's already gotten loose, and now he knows he's got eight pitches when he comes into the game should he enter. High fastball. Got a piece of it found it into the catcher's glove. more smiles on that bench recently quite a few more smiles Blue Jays trying to dig themselves out of a deep early season hole. Oh and two. Maybe gets a piece of it. Luke Bailey is making his eighth start since coming to the Blue Jays. He also appeared in one game as a defensive replacement but the team is five and three since he has come up to the Blue Jays. That's all you want from your backup catcher who has taken over as the everyday catcher with Russell Martin. I'm still thinking about that throw last inning. Yeah. That was a beauty. He gunned down Guillermo Heredia through a strike right on top of the base. Another 0 2 pitch to Maley. Another run wouldn't hurt. And tough. Luke Maley trying to deliver his first RBI of the season. He's 0 for 3 so far today. Hit a long fly ball his last time up. If he can do that, he's going to get that RBI. In fact, he's flying out deep to left field twice this afternoon. Two 
two balls and two strikes. That hit him. Hit him on the hand, and he'll go to first. Got hit by that inside fastball, and he's going to go to first. That'll load the bases. Well, DePazos has a great arm. He can rush it up there in the upper 90s, but at times he loses his command, and he's going to lose his fastball right here. It got him right in the upper arm tricep area. And he will go down to first base. That will load him up for Pilar, the Blue Jays' best hitter this afternoon. Kevin is three for four, two singles, a double, and he scored a pair of runs, and he's added a stolen base. He can break it wide open right here. Only one out. to left center that's going to be deep enough to score a run Goins tags from third Travis tags and advances from second and Pilar picks up an RBI his 10th of the season that's what you're looking for Sloppy defense got the Blue Jays a chance to score that run. There was an error by the second baseman, a missed tag at third base, and the Blue Jays take advantage of that with a sack fly. Good day for Pilar at the plate. Done a little bit of everything. CQ Carrera, boy, Pilar and Carrera have done a terrific job in this series. They have combined for 14 hits. There goes the runner throw through. Here comes Travis home. Bad throw, and he scores. The Blue Jays steal a run. They're hitting on all cylinders now. They run the double steal to perfection. You got a fast runner at third. You've got a medium runner at first base. You take off on the first pitch. You try and draw that throw to second base, and as soon as that catcher cocks his arm and he throws it through, that runner at third base takes off. Watch Travis. As soon as he sees him lift his arm, he's taken off. Modders throws a little bit offline, and that allows Travis to get in safely. 7-2 Blue Jays. Maley at second. He reaches back. Jams up his hand, but Travis Stiven had already touched home plate with that left hand. 1 1 count on Carrera. Lays off the breaking ball. It's like he banged it on his the catcher's arm or his elbow and still looking at that left hand. Two and two now. Blue Jays doing a number on the Mariners at bullpen. Osuna sits down. Campos continues to throw. The steal of home by Devin Travis is the first time the Blue Jays have had a steal of home since June 2nd, 2015, when Russell Martin, on the front end of a double steal, also stole home. The uh, Blue Jays don't run much. They've had three stolen bases this afternoon, and that double steal gives them a big insurance run here. That four stolen bases today. Pulled on the ground. Valencia waits. He'll toss to Pasos. And that'll do it. But the Blue Jays score two more runs a sack fly and a steal of home by Devin Travis. We'll go to the ninth. The Blue Jays have a five run lead.
presented by the rugged Honda Pioneer Off-Road Family. Your adventure begins here. It was Saturday afternoon here at Rogers Center. The Blue Jays looking to make it four straight wins for the first time this season. They'll turn things over to Leonel Campos making his third appearance of the season. Campo finished off Thursday's night, Thursday night's win with a 1 2 3 ninth inning against Seattle with a strikeout of, of Dyson. Just called back up to the big club. He's been up and down a couple of times this year. Doesn't have a record in two games, doesn't have an ERA in two games. Joe Smith worked a very effective eighth inning and a strikeout, a walk, and a single, nothing more. Just a reminder Aaron Sanchez will return from the disabled list tomorrow as the Blue Jays try to complete the four game sweep. Over the Mariners, he'll be opposed by Ariel Miranda, a left-hander. Underneath the glove of Barney Segura is headed for second with his second consecutive hit, his seventh double of the season. Kept that hitting streak alive his last time up with the infield hit. That would have been another great play by the Blue Jays if Barney came up with that one. He is in. Guard against the bunt. There's a lot of top spin on this ball. And it's by Darwin down the left field line for extra bases. After tomorrow's game, the Atlanta Braves will be here for a two game set Monday and Tuesday. Bartolo Colon will open things up for the Braves against Mike Bolsinger. And then Jaime Garcia and Marco Estrada. On Tuesday, that'll wrap up the homestead. Bow Singer, pretty good outing his first time out. As things stand now, Blue Jays are going to miss their ex teammate. R.A. Dickey. R.A. Dickey's scheduled to pitch tomorrow's game for Atlanta. Well, after the leadoff double, Roberto Osuna has gotten back up to stay loose. It's a five run Blue Jays lead. Campos all of a sudden having trouble throwing strikes. It's 3 0 now. Double and a walk to start the ninth, and Pete Walker going to check on the status of Osuna. Middle of the order. Obviously, this is a very potent lineup, even though they don't have Robinson Cano in the batting order. Nelson Cruz has two hits this afternoon. Well, that's the last thing you want to do with these big boppers coming up and start putting some guys on in front of them. And John Gibbons said, OK, enough is enough. I know the danger of Cruz and Seeger. I'm going to go with my closer. I want to snuff out the threat right here. So, you know, Campos gives up a double and a walk, and he will turn things over to Roberto Osuna. Osuna coming in. He was in, in the game yesterday at a 1 2 3 ninth inning with a couple of strikeouts. Nelson Cruz will be the batter.
Cano it's right quad tightness now Cano took batting practice today when he landed on his front foot it was still tender Seattle manager Scott Service said look we know what he means to our lineup but bigger picture here we don't want him to come out and tweak something in a game and miss him for an extended period of time Buck. Thank you very much Arash and no sooner delivers a first pitch strike to you. Nelson Cruz Cruz two for four so far this afternoon the 15th appearance of the season for the closer. Berto pitched in yesterday's game a one two three ninth inning. With a couple of strikeouts. Boy he's been using that four seam fastball very effectively lately. Breaking ball. Travis to go and back to Smith. What a play at first. Goins pulls off an Ozzy Smith as he jumped over the base runner after starting the double play. Travis, a nice toss and smoke a good dig over at first. <laughs> I'll tell you, you won't find a prettier double play than this one. Travis shovels it to Goins. The runner is right on top of him. He kicks the bag. Got his feet tangled up, so he just fires it in midair, and then Smokey picks it on the other end for a double play. Second double play turned by the Blue Jays this afternoon. Two outs. Seeger goes after the first pitch and hits it into the seats. Osuna threw 14 pitches yesterday. As he retired the side in order. He's thrown four today, all of them strikes. Nothing better than one pitch and two outs. Oh, and two. Oh, he's throwing a lot of strikes. Marcus Stroman began the day doing exactly that. Found in that strike zone. Set a real positive tone for this ball game. This should do it. Pilar awaits in center when it comes down the Blue Jays win. Osuna closes out the Mariners here in the ninth and the Blue Jays have won four in a row. And some late home runs do it again for the Blue Jays. Kendris Morales ties it with a home run in the sixth. Jose Bautista puts him ahead with a three run home run in the seventh inning. They get a couple of extra runs in that eighth inning. The pitchers and the defense took it from there and they go for the sweep tomorrow. Aaron Sanchez will be on the mound. Dominic Leone picks up the win. He retired the only batter he faced. The Blue Jays win it. We'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Here's Blue Jays Central.